Assalamualaikum <coughs> Once again, my dear respected brothers and sisters, I greet you with the Islamic greeting of Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Just a short introduction of who I am. I, my name is Hafiz Shayyir Jawad. I am the son of Imam Jawad Ahmad. And to me, to come to Dawud Islah, it is just as if I am coming back home. In the early 2000s, I would come here for Sunday school and also for summer school and also for the Ramadan activities. So basically I am the quote unquote alumni of this Sunday school. And subhanAllah, just recently I am also pursuing my bachelor's degree in Islamic studies from Mishka University. And in our hadith class, we had to write a research paper and we also had to do a, an oral presentation. And my topic was how to become a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, my professor, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Rahawan, he really appreciated my work and he also told me to begin to give this lecture series, which is why alhamdulillah, I'm here uh, in front of you to give this lecture series. So before I get into the details of today's topic, I want to ask a question to each and every one of you. What does it mean to become a wali of the choice of Allah? Subhanallah. What's your name, brother? Abdul Aziz. Abdul Aziz. He got the prize. Alhamdulillah. When you make your choice with the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then obviously you're going to become closer to him. You're going to become his wali. And in Arabic, the literal meaning of the word wali means your closest friend. Like your dearest friend. Like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that, you know, that's my best friend. Like in Urdu we say, Jigriya, Jigriya, you know, that's what it is. And even in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about taking the wali or the friends. And He says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, that, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, la tattakhidhu al-yahooda wal-nasara awliyaa ba'duhum awliyaa ba'd. That, O oh, you who believe, do not take the Jews and Christians as your very close friends. Does this mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something against the Ahli Kitab? Does this mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has a short introduction of today's topic because Obviously, this is going to be a lecture series. Inshallah, I'm going to be coming in the next few weekends as well. So today, we just want to give a short introduction of this topic. And over the course of the next few days, we're going to continue on the characteristics about the uh, aspect about taqwa. Now, when it comes to the portion on the introduction about how to become the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now the most what we would call frequent aspect that has also been found in the many books of the seerah and also the many books of the lives of the sahaba and also in the history books of islamic history the one thing that is common with all of the wali of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that they pray tahajjud salah regularly they don't miss tahajjud salah can anyone tell me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer at that time. 
As in the hadith narration, our Prophet Sallallahu he talks about this and he says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala each and every night, this is not about Ramadan, even besides Ramadan, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He descends down to the first heaven and then He calls upon to the people that is there anyone who wants to ask me of anything so that I may give it to him? And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He also says that is there anyone who wants to seek uh, tawbah, who wants to seek forgiveness from any of us and actually talk to all of the community. And that is the main cause that the Wali of Allah, when they get up for tahajjud and they pray however many rak'at they can, they also, when they're asking for dua, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the Muslim community at large as well. And so this is something which I, I would always recommend that also me as well and also everyone who is sitting here, that we should try our best to begin to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And another aspect is that the Wali of Allah, they also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about helping the deen in, in whichever way possible. Now, the problem is that many of us, we have this misconception that, oh, uh, when it comes to servicing the deen, you know, I have to go study abroad, I need to become a sheikh, I need to have either eight years or 10 years or however, however many years uh, that you require. And then I need to memorize the Quran, I need to be leading tarawih. It's telling you to become a sheikh. Yes, becoming a sheikh is very noble. It is a very noble deed. It is a very noble action. Yes, there is no doubt about that. But if you did not become a sheikh, you went the worldly education route. You got your secular education done. You became an engineer, you became a doctor, a lawyer, an IT professional, a finance person or an accounting person. Then what you can do is you can help the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever capacity you may have. Because when you are a very good engineer and you are working with non-Muslims, then that is your chance to give da'wah. Tell them about Islam. Because many people don't know about Islam. That is how it is in this country. That surprisingly enough, many people just don't know about Ramadan. This is simply how it is. But obviously in the recent years, when the Muslim population is increasing and also they are going into the corporate world and they're working with different non-Muslim companies and people, obviously the awareness is increasing as well. And so therefore I'll end with this tonight that May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to serve, to serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whichever capacity we may have. And the main, another aspect is that some people are very well off financially. That they can support the Islamic institutions. They can actually help Allah subhanahu He said that when, a per, when, a, when the son of Adam dies, all of his good deeds are cut off except three. What are they? Ilmun yantafa'abihi. That any type of beneficial knowledge that they have left behind. So if you are really good at math or you're really good at some type of science subject, you can teach other kids, teach the young generation. It's going to benefit them and you will also get the reward. And the, the second thing that Allah subhanahu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said is any type, any, uh, that the person who dies, he leaves behind a righteous child who makes dua for him. And the third aspect is that he has some type of sadaqa jariya, some type of perpetual charity. And so that is going to keep going on and on and on until the day of Yawm al